Hi, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and today we'll be looking at changing our launch screen for our Alpine head unit. So this is something we've covered in the past, all but written. So today we'll be doing a, a video today on how to do it and I'll guide you through the, all the steps on how to change your launch screen on your Alpine head unit. So not many Alpine head units are compatible uh, to allow you to change your launch screens. So what I would advise is to check your manual and see if you have anything mentioning uh, custom launch screen. Uh, if it's not in the manual, it's likely that you can't change it. My X902D-G7 Alpine head unit is able to do this. So that's why I'm going to bring you this guide. Um, if you've got any other Alpine system that has this ability, uh, the process should be pretty much the same. So let's dive in. So this is the launch screen that we will be replacing. Uh, so you basically need an image and a USB stick and a editing package of some sort to allow you to edit the image how you want it, cut it, crop it, save it, and um, then we'll be putting it on a USB stick. So let's go inside and get the file ready. Right, so we're in the office and we're going to get cracking on the desktop uh, and create our image for the launch screen. So we're going to be creating a launch screen for our Alpine head unit. That is a X902D-G7 Alpine head unit. So first things first, I've gone onto their website. Um, if you can't find your manual to find out if uh, your Alpine is able to even have an opening launch screen uh, customized, head to the manuals, like I said. Um, in the product page, if you scroll all the way down, uh, there's a section under support uh, for uh, manual downloads of manuals. And if you download um, a couple of the manuals, you'll find a manual that basically starts uh, similar to this, which is like the main booklet manual, the one that has the most pages, basically. If you can't find that, get the download. Um, this is the 903D version. So I'm hoping it's gonna be pretty much the same. And if you search on this page for um, opening screen, so you find a, a section in the in the cust in the contents called opening screen customization. So we're going to hit go there, um, and this should be page twenty one in the English manual. And here we go. So opening screen customization, you can set a BMP image that is stored on USB flash drive as the opening screen. This requires. Uh, the following image format, folder name and file name. So as it says, you need a image which is f saved as a BMP. You might have heard of a JPEG or a GIF or a GIF um, and a PNG type files. Uh, this is a BMP file, this is a bitmap file. So you need to save the image as a bitmap file. So you need a software that allows you to do that. Not only the image has to be at 800 by 480, pixel resolution. It has to be 24-bit RGB or less. Um, some software packages should do that by default without you having to set that. Uh, it has to be non-compressed, so that's what a BMP file is. It's a non-compressed file. So as long as you save it as a BMP file, you shouldn't have that problem. Um, and then you have to basically have it in a folder called opening file, and you have to name the actual file openingfile.bmp not opening file and then a hidden um, extension, I think it has to actually have the .bmp file extension at the end. So make sure you do that when you save the file, specifically on a Mac. Um, right, so that's the, the main overview of what you need to do to create that particular file. Otherwise the file won't get recognized when you put your USB stick or in your USB port. So let's first create our image. So I've chosen this image basically. Um, this is going to be my launch image for my Alpine head unit and we'll replace the one that I showed you earlier with this. Um, this is one straight out of Google Images. I did a search for Golf GTI wallpapers. This looks good. My car is also grey. Um, 
and it's a GTI, it's Mark 7, so everything all suits here. I don't have to worry about adding logos and things like that. So I think we'll just go with this one for now and see how it looks, how it performs. Um, one thing to note when you actually are looking um, for images to look, use as your launch screen is um, gradients. Uh, the head units don't have a really good um, color range, so some gradients will look like they're banded so it's really best practice is to use a flat color image that will probably give you the best quality um, here so I think what we'll do we'll use this image put it on the actual system make sure it all works uh, see what the quality is like uh, and then go from there so for now we'll just use it right so we're in Photoshop and I am going to resize um, this image because we need it to be 800 by 480 pixels so to do that, we need um, two ways of going about doing it. We can either crop and shrink and just get this image um, cropped to that, the size that we want, which is not always the best solution. Or we can start from a new image, uh, bring the image in as a layer, move it about inside that perfect size, scale it and so on, and, and then get the image perfectly in there. Or you could just download an image that is perfectly 800 by 480. That's another solution as well. But today, let's do a, a canvas crop first and see how that looks for us. So um, opening up canvas size um, is gonna basically crop the image. Um, we want it in pixels. And at the moment it's 1000 by um, 668 pixels. So not brilliant. Um, we'll just have a look at the actual image here, it's quite central, um, there's a lot in width and there are things that are in height so we could probably keep the width and then add height if we need to or crop height. So let's just close that and then go to image size. We want to keep the width, I quite like the width, so we're going to do 800 here and you can see here it's, it's automatically with this little link chain turned on, it's going to 534 pixels in height. So we're going to OK that and um, enable this. So now it's shrunk it slightly. So this is now 800 wide. So we've got the width perfect. Um, and then height wise, we're going to crop this now. So we're going to do an even crop. So I think that might work better for us. So we're going to switch this back to pixels. We've got our 800. We're now going to crop it to 480 high from the center and then just see how that looks. Yes, we're going to crop, so proceed. All right, so that's not too bad. Um, I think I'm going to drop it down slightly. So if I, because this is a background image, this is going to get cropped. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to undo that Command Z on the Mac. And then I'm going to duplicate this by dragging into the uh, add layer. And then I'm going to move it down slightly by say 20 pixels. And then I'm going to do another canvas crop in pixels to 480 from the center. All right, so that's a bit nicer presented. So now it's time to save. So flatten the image. Uh, by going to the layers options, flatten image. Uh, if you've not done a separate layer, you don't need to do this. You just want to know that it's, it's a background image. And then basically we want to um, save as. And we want to select the format of BMP. And then we want to change the file name to openingfile.bmp so openingfile.bmp we've got to keep the extension there and we're going to save it so we want it as a uh, it's given us some options here let's keep it as windows format for now and here we go 24 bit depth we want to keep that let's have a look at the advanced modes no we don't really want that we just want basic so 24 bit windows okay Right, so now we have our BMP file here. If I preview that, there it is. And now we need to basically get a USB stick. So let's get a USB stick.
Right, we've got lots of new USB sticks here uh, from various um, eras and decades. But what I find works, or has worked for me, um, is this SanDisk. It's a SanDisk USB, uh, I think it's a 16 gig. Um, I've used it many times on um, either installs or just various, just putting, doing things on Windows. So for the system to recognize this, I recommend that you format this in, as FAT32. Um, you can Google um, how you do this, but I'm gonna do the process with you now, just by plug it into my MacBook, and then I'm gonna to go to the utility to format this to FAT32. So let's do that now. So um, I've had to use this cable because I've got a MacBook Pro with USB-C. This is a USB-A uh, drive. So we're gonna plug this into here and then we're gonna plug this into our MacBook. Right, so we plugged it into the MacBook. Any minute now, we're gonna get um, the USB drive coming up here. So first of all, we need to go to Disk Utility. So open up Spotlight, type in uh, Disk and look for Hard Disk Utility. Uh, and then once in here, you need to click on the external USB drive that's been selected. Uh, and now we want to format it. So we want to erase it. We don't want it Mac because it's not going to read that at all. So we want MS-DOS FAT. Uh, and we just keep this as is for now. Um, I don't think you need to rename this at all. Uh, so we're going to keep it as is and we're going to erase it. So it's going to unmount the disk. So this is a 16 gig uh, USB stick, very old. Um, I've not had any problems with it. And I think if you were to buy something similar uh, even with a higher higher storage capacity, it should be just the same. So this is now erased. So it's now um, a 16 gig volume using MS-DOS FAT32. So that's all cool. So we're gonna go into this drive now. And um, so you can close this, don't need that now. And in this blank empty drive, we need to make a folder. Uh, so add new folder and then well, this needs to be called uh, opening file yeah so we're going to do this in caps opening file and then open this and then in another window we need to um, um, we need to copy and drag over this uh, opening file.bmp into your USB drive folder. So we have the opening file.bmp in a folder called opening file inside our USB stick that is uh, formatted as FAT32. Right, so that, let's just go over the guidelines. And basically the guidelines are saying that we go into our car, uh, we connect the USB flash drive into the uh, port I don't think you need to turn the um, uh, the car over or anything. And then we basically go through the on-screen prompts to um, apply the launch screen if everything works uh, as we intend. So with all that all set up, let's take our USB stick back in the car and uh, see how it works. Right, so we're back in the car and we have our USB stick with the uh, file and folder added to it. Let's see if it all works. So we have our USB stick and uh, we're going to now plug it into uh, the glove compartment which is the only USB port that we have on um, in this Golf. So I'm going to take out the dongle that would normally be in there and I'm just going to literally plug this USB stick into the USB port. If you don't have a USB port that's free you might have to go to the back of the head unit where the USB uh, lives. And then we're basically going to turn on the car, one ignition up, and see if it recognises the USB stick. So this is the old screen that we're going to replace. And we're going to let this boot up. It's now accessing the stick, and up comes opening customization, which we do want to do. So we're going to say OK. And now it's applying. Customization succeeded. Please remove the USB and press OK. So we're going to remove the USB. 
press OK. And that's all done, apparently. So let's turn the ignition off. And then we're going to start up again. And hopefully when I now turn the key, we're going to get the new launch screen. And there it is. Nice and fancy and very quick. Great, so that's that. I'm going to plug the wireless dongle back in and then shut this up. Just going to do it again. Just turn this off. Nice. Happy with that. And the colours are great actually. Uh, the gradient has actually worked really nicely. I go back on what I said earlier really. Some images can appear very banded uh, if you get really bad gradients. So if you do find that you get banding on the screen then uh, try a different image um, that doesn't have as much of a gradient uh, going down the screen and then you shouldn't have a problem. So I hope that's been helpful for anyone that's looking to change their opening launch screen on their Alpine head unit. Leave us a comment below if you have any problems and I'll see if I can help you out. And uh, I hope it's been helpful for anyone. Uh, if it has, give us a like, give us a subscribe and that will really help us out. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.